All right, I went ahead and posted up the Pasadena Bridge uh, article. Here it is. Um, we'll go ahead and look at it and make sure that we um, are looking at the same, same information. And so here we go. Uh, we're going to gather information from here, and we are going to start creating the uh, bridge case study. And so we're going to make several slides. And uh, so this is the first slide. Uh, if you want to go ahead and pause this, pause this. But please do not put my name. Put your name. This is the example. So. Um, we're going to go a little quick on the slides, but again, you can pause and, and check out the slides and pretty much copy down everything that's there. Okay, so first thing is uh, the Colorado Bridge. Uh, we um, are going to look at who created it. So there were two men that um, created the, the Colorado Street Bridge. And the first man we're going to talk about is Joseph Alexander Lowe Waddell. Um, he was a civil engineer that um, helped create the uh, bridge. And then there was the builder who did the modifications. That's John Drake uh, Mercerau. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and so you can see how um, simple this slide is. Um, got a picture of Joseph Alexander Lowe Waddell. Um, I clearly labeled it right here, um, and so he's kind of hard to find. So uh, what I did was I looked up this and just did a Google search, and let's clear this out, and I added I added engineer. So, copy-pasted uh, his whole name and added engineer. Uh, click on images. And <laughs> he's not here. Whoa. Great. Okay, after a few uh, tries, um, I went from 1L back to 2Ls, and then here's his picture that showed up. And so that's how you can find his picture. Make sure you toss pictures on your slides. Uh, your digital portfolio should not be boring. Uh, your case study should not be boring. So again, what you're trying to do with the case study is research uh, information about bridges, successful bridges. And it's good to know uh, who designed the bridges uh, so we can give credit to where credit is due. And so this is the uh, first slide, talks about the origins of the bridge. It was built in 1913. It's also known as the La Loma Bridge. Um, it's also known as the Arroyo Seco Bridge uh, because of the uh, creek that's going underneath. And uh, according to this article, uh, there were some modifications. I, I didn't only just use this article to do uh, research. Uh, I looked up other places uh, as well. And so I urge you to do the same. So uh, in class, we did come up with um, other information. So this was designed by Waddle and Harrington Firm. Uh, I guess um, Waddle had um, another partner by the last name of Harrington, and they had a firm together. Um, I did find out through the city of Pasadena's website that in 2015 that the uh, bridge was revamped with uh, earthquake strengthening and fixing and fixing up the uh, roads in various parts of the bridge um, basically to make the uh, retrofit the bridge with uh, earthquake um, strength and abilities to withstand an earthquake so um, 
And then the, the latest project, the last one um, that they've done so far on this was uh, they added these uh, barriers uh, to prevent people from throwing themselves off of them. It, all bridges have this problem, and so I don't know why. Engineers and architects didn't think of this a long time ago, but it is what it is. Um, now, you know, we can address this when we design the new bridge. And so, anyway, I put these two pictures up. I thought it was um, interesting to put, you know, the humble beginnings of the bridge and to the latest project. So we can get a nice historical background. And the concept of the bridge is the deck arc bridge, arch bridge uh, design. So that's the type of bridge it is. Um, so I, I created this label here, uh, put that there. Um, and the next slide. So uh, this is the bridge architectural features and dimensions. And for those of you who don't dimension, for, zo for those of you that don't know what dimensions are, this is just a fancy term for measurements. Um, and that's okay. Um, we like to use fancy words in academia. Uh, academia is basically school. So uh, here's some of the information that we got from the city and from the article over here. Um, so pause that, um, pretty much copy that. Um, you can choose whatever picture you want. I just had students Google um, Colorado Street Bridge. Uh, and pretty much picture, uh, choose a picture that shows off the features that we have described in here. And so we know that it spans uh, 1,467 and a half feet. Uh, there's 11 arches. Um, at the time that it was built, it was considered the tallest um, and longest bridge in Southern California. Um, one of its features is that it has a 52-degree uh, curve in the bridge's center. So you can kind of see that curve right here. And a constant uh, two and a half, or not two and a half, but 2.65% grade. Um, and what grade is, is it's a slope. And so that slope is basically, um, let's see if I could draw this. Uh, so on one side of the bridge, you have a piece of land like that. And then on the other side of the bridge, you have another piece of land like that. Well, one side is a little higher than the other. And, and that's what that, this 2.5% uh, is talking about. Uh, because this side is 30 feet higher than this side. And so, in architecture and engineering, we call this little this slope a grade, and um, it's a consider it like a, a measurement of units, um, kind of like centimeters or meters. Um, and so that's that's how we measure sloping uh, measurements, um, uh, even on the ski slope. So if you ever go skiing, um, that's how we measure it. And so 2.65 uh, grade is is gradual. It's very gradual. And so you, you don't even feel it when you're driving through there. Uh, it's not very steep at all. Um, but the east bank is 30 feet taller than the west bank. And um, anyway, just thought you'd like to have a little of that information. Let me just go ahead and erase that. And the next slide comes from a video that we watched, and um, it's all about uh, design factors. And um, so this isn't necessarily just the Pasadena, this is just overall design factors in designing a bridge. And let me go ahead and point to you exactly where that video is. In So if you sc scroll down uh, in week three, the 
and click on the uh, week three uh, bridge uh, design case study scroll all the way down this is that video right here and it'll pop up and it will look like oop, not like that like this um, so go ahead and watch that video look at the notes that we took uh, but I also want you to watch this video this video shows the uh, Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapsing um, in 1940 uh, this particular bridge um, at the time was the engineering was was spot on at the time um, according to what we knew about engineering at the time and we didn't find out something like this could happen until it actually happened and as architects and engineers uh, we also study what goes wrong uh, you know what not to do and so this little clip will show uh, the swaying of So it shows the swaying of this bridge, and uh, I'll let you watch the whole thing. We'll we'll just skip to um, the other parts. What amazes me is these these people walking haphazardly, just like oh okay, the bridge is you know getting ready to fall apart. Uh, it amazes me how calm these people are walking around this this bridge that's ready to go at any moment. Um, and so when you get later in the video, you see the actual bridge collapse. Um, and so when they studied this, they they found out that the bridge itself started swaying like that because of wind. And wind can do a lot of damage. It's a lot. It's something that we do engineering for. Uh, when wind travels, wind travels, in uh, it tumbles like this. And this is good to know. So when it tumbles like that. Um, what they found out is that uh, it can tumble like that. So when they found out that um, wind can do this, they discovered a phenomenon that they hadn't considered before called reverberation. And the simplest way I can explain what reverberation is, is if you've ever pushed someone on a swing and that first push they don't go very far but when they start coming back uh, you kind of time it right and you give them that same you know push you know it's not a very lot a, a whole lot of strength to push them and so you know you just give them that same push and they go a little further um, you know that same force um, if you repeat that same force and time it just right every time you know, they get higher and higher. That's what happened here. The wind that tumbled through. Now imagine this is a continuous wind hitting this bridge. Um, it hit that bridge at that right time. And it caused, it caused the bridge to go up a little bit. And then it bounced back down. And then when it, it went up a little bit more and as it was going back down it went up a little bit more and that's when you started seeing the, the bridge really getting really turbulent and and wild um that's reverberation and so we learn from our mistakes um and not necessarily to say that the engineers did a mistake the engineer at the time just wasn't aware of what happened so you can imagine why we wanted to fix this thousands and thousands of dollars maybe even a millions was spent on constructing and designing this bridge countless of hours taken to construct it all came down because the big bad wolf came and blew 
this this house down. Uh, so go ahead and um, if you want watch that video, um, it's a short short video. Uh, but this is the main video to watch. Um, this is how to design a bridge, and you will go over uh, design factors of that bridge. And these are the notes that we took from that for bridge types. Should make that plural. There we go. And that's where we got uh, started and here we got uh, to the bridge crossings um, the placement of bridges um, and so let me go ahead and go back um, <clears throat> excuse me short span bridges um, and beam and truss uh, these 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 bridges tend to be the bridges that you see across like small creeks and stuff like that. And what a uh, truss is, uh, well, let me just show you what this this bridge looks like. So these are beam and truss bridges, and they're pretty quick to throw up and and put across. Again, really short spans. Um, they have done them on long spans, and it's expensive. So um, you can see, uh, look in this picture right here. There's a crane putting this whole thing together. It's probably built off site and trucked right in. So the reason why they don't do long spans anymore is because you know modern bridges we we do them a little differently, and we get into that in the video. Um, and in in a bit so suspension bridges they're a little bit more complex and they're also more expensive to build um, the most notable suspension bridge in California is the Golden Gate um, this is uh, an amazing feat uh, it's pretty iconic uh, anytime you hear about San Francisco and the Bay Area you know this bridge always comes up uh, fun fact about this bridge every year uh, they paint it they start on one side and they get to the other side um, you know January 1st they start on one side and then December 31st they end up on the other side and back to January 1st they go back to the other side uh, I had one student ask, why do they paint it every year? That seems ridiculous. Well, this is all salt water. Salt reacts with paint, and it'll eat up paint. It'll eat up metal. Uh, the chemical reactions will pretty much corrode, and every, all the metal will rust. So that's why they paint it every year. Um, so kudos to the crew that maintains this bridge. Um, all bridges need to be maintained. Um, you know, they don't, they're not going to stand, um, the test of time forever. And so they need to be maintained. Um, they need to be oiled, um, lubricated, same thing, um, and painted. Uh, and then there's streets on there. Those need to be paved every now and then. So there you have it. That's the suspension bridge. Um, and then you have arch bridges, um, Let's go ahead and take a look at arch bridges. So these are arch bridges. These are very old school. Um, they're one of the primitive bridges that you'll see. Um, they usually are made out of stone and the stones um, are pretty much uh, made out of the local materials from the mountains nearby. Um, you know, bridges like this where they have stones cut, you know, they quarry these stones from, like I said, local local mountains. Uh, they typically don't go very far. These bridges are super old, um, pretty much since the, the medieval era. Um, and the reason why we don't 
use these bridges anymore is because they are very time consuming to make. And not only that, but to cut all this stone out of the side of a mountain, we're destroying beautiful, beautiful nature and habitats for various wildlife. Um, and, and that's not cool. So, uh, especially when we know how to do bridges like this with steel and concrete, where we rely heavily on engineering. And you can see that there's a long span of opening where here you need an arch, an arch, an arch, an arch. And so if, you know, this was a freeway, this, this wouldn't be an effective freeway. Um, and so that's why we don't use those anymore. Um, this is also an arch bridge. Um, and, you know, look at, it even says 17 uh, advantages and disadvantages of arch bridges. And so, again, we're also looking at common things where you have to continue to make arches and arches. Um, and if this is a Bivzi River, not a lot of boats can come through at the same time. They have to coordinate who can go through um, certain parts of the uh, the river. So anyway, those are arch bridges. Um, I showed you a little bit about the modern bridges and how they're built from concrete and heavily relied on design and engineering. Um, typical bridges over the freeways are box girder. Uh, let's see. Let's type box girder bridges. And these are usually done um, in pieces, uh, modular. Um, anytime you hear the term modular, um, I always like to tell students to think of Legos because look at this. These pieces were built off-site, meaning it was probably manufactured in a, in a, uh, a warehouse somewhere. It was molded and all the, all the steel and concrete were formed. In a warehouse somewhere and then it was shipped to this uh, site where this uh, bridge is at and they connect them like Legos um, a little more extensive than that that's a simplistic um, way to describe it but you get the idea they just boom 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 piece it together and that's how come you're able to construct a lot of things really really quickly um, there you go, more modular uh, construction going on. Uh, here we go again. And that's box girder. And the bridge crossing. So the video also goes to talk about the importance of the placement of a bridge and understanding various anchoring and foundation points. And so um, the location of the bridge is chosen um, mainly to simplify construction, uh, reduce costs, and ensure bridge uh, strength and durability. Um, so the let me erase that. that. That just doesn't sound right. So let's say a bridge is going over a river. And you you, you need it to go over a river because uh, one part of the town is growing. Uh, one, part, one side of the river, a town is growing. And on the other side of the river, you know, the town is growing as well. Um, and we needed a, a way to connect the towns together uh, for commerce or, or whatever reason. And we need a bridge and if we look at the river uh, you know some rivers are raging rivers and they are nasty if you fall in those parts you can probably drown because they are so wild uh, these rapids can can take you under and smash you up against rocks and we typically do not build bridges 
uh, over those parts because uh, you know if we have to sink uh, piles down into the um, bridge and let me see if I can pull up an example so things like this these these piles go down all the way to the bottom of the riverbed and you can see how calm this water is. If this was rushing crazy water, how were people going to be able to safely construct this without the water and the forces of the water pushing all the materials as hard as it can? Um, there's just no way. Uh, it wouldn't be feasible. It would not be safe, you know. People building all this stuff, they, they need to return home to their loved ones too. And so when we build bridges or anything, we have safety in mind as well. Um, so we make sure that we pick a good spot to put a bridge. Um, not only for the safety of the crew, but... You know, there's some parts of the river that are wider than the other. And this is a good example right here. This becomes um, shorter distance across than from here. And that shorter distance across means less material. So it's overall cheaper. Uh, brings down the cost and saves clients and cities and, you know, everybody money. Um, not all bridges are straight. Some are skewed. And when they talk about skewed bridges, um, if we're looking down on, um, let's just say there's some land over here and there's some land over here and we need to put, um, a bridge across, but there's a road right here. And it, for whatever reason, there's a road right here. You know, this bridge isn't directly straight across. It's a terrible drawing, but you get the idea. It's skewed. It's drawn in an angle. And that's all that means. That it's drawn in an angle. Um, actually, I could do a better job drawing this. There we go. So here's the bridge. And that is a skewed bridge. Where this is upstream a little more, and this is downstream a little more, and it goes like that. And then there's bridges that are curved. And the curved bridges, like this one, make up for that skew. So you have a gentle curve rather than that angle, that hard angle on that bridge, which makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. Um, so that's pretty much uh how what we got so far um on our uh case study and uh go ahead and go through the slides uh watch the videos not this one this one and um go ahead and create these slides and we'll keep adding to them week by week um, we'll probably be at this for a couple of weeks and we'll turn it all in at once. Um, so go ahead and, um, get to work on it. You know, you can do a little, you know, one slide a day. I think there's only six slides. Um, I wouldn't do one slide a day. I'd probably do, you know, maybe the first three, one day, the second three, another day. And, and you'll be pretty much done with the assignment. Um, it literally took us 
one period to do all this. So uh, anyway, with that being said, 